You are listening to Lone Star Community Radio on 104.5 KCZW LP Conroe and 106.1 KZCC LP Conroe and worldwide on IRLoneStar.com. Hi, this is Cindy Cochran. Welcome to the podcast of my show. Remember, you can join me live every weekday morning from 10 to 11 a.m. on Lone Star Community Radio on Conroe's FM 106.1 and 104.5 and globally on IRLoneStar.com. If you're a big fan of my podcast, subscribe to my YouTube and SoundCloud channels. And you're always invited to my Facebook page, The Cindy Cochran Show. The Cindy Cochran Show is brought to you by our title sponsor, The Wooten Financial Group. Call today for all your financial concerns, 936-449-5952. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday. Ah, yes. We know what that is. That's Friday's Eve, but the movies start tonight, 7 o'clock, new movies. Uh, And so be sure and stay with... uh, Pirates of the Caribbean! (laughs) See, you just stole my thunder. <laughs> no, I, I, oh, is that what's coming out today? I have no idea. I have no yeah, idea. there's that and something else, I believe. I, don't, I, I think something else is coming out this weekend as well. Is Captain Underpants coming out? June 2nd. That's June 2nd. I don't Captain know. Captain Underpants, yeah. <laughs> That's, uh, see, if you had uh, children, you'd know that. But, uh, yeah, Pirates of the Caribbean. Now, you can't take kids to go see that, can you? Why not? Is it PG-13? Yeah, it's PG-13, but that's just being kind. That's all. Oh, okay. So it's okay? You would take yours. Okay. All right. Then, uh, Although I'm not a parent, so. Yeah. That's, you don't have to sh- that we cover their of. eyes, cover their mouth, cover their... Shut up. Don't say that anymore. Um, anyway, you're listening to the Cindy Cochran Show, and I'm so happy that you're with us. I'm so happy that you're here because we need to hear from you. That's the reason is um, because we were going to have Caleb and... Is homegrown tomatoes. Is that correct, Richard Schischler? One second. I'm Are you blowing into the mic? Them. Yes. People mess with these mics, and I got to fix them on on the air. Oh, okay. All right. So, uh, yeah, Richard's uh, joining me. He always comes in like, I'll be here. He comes in and saves the day and said, let me be here and talk. And his words of wisdom will always be welcome because I got nothing. I got nothing. All I have is um, I talked to Connor Halstead last night. And he was bragging about their new show, Ticket Stop. Oh, yeah. And uh, he said he, he does a lot of the work. And are you proud of Connor? Connor's very organized and has everything together. And has Oh, the, yeah. He sends the, me a lineup uh, two to three days prior. I'm yeah. usually the one that's kind of trying to play catch up. Ah, ah. Does that make you more understanding for people that are not caught up? Or what? Do you, how do you feel? No. I mean, it's more of. I, I do my prep the day before, the night before. And you, we usually have homework. We usually have to watch a movie or something. And that's what we talk about for the next show to kind of Aww. tease people. So that's cool. So yeah. it's, oh, it's not current movies. It's well, it depends. Movies. He's the one that goes to the theater and sees it because he has more free the time. New, yeah. So, but, but then uh, I do the Netflix streaming mm-hmm. stuff. Like, here's some cool movies on streaming. This is what I watched. And this is. Why don't you do your show on Friday so he can go Thursday night and watch the new movies that come out and then talk about. What's coming His, out? He works too, Cindy. So that's the, the Friday. Time he's slot. not off on Friday. I don't know. Why, why don't we call him? I mean, call. Would you call no, Connor? No, no. Uh, no. But uh, he said it's uh, it's great. He's having a, a lot of fun time. Yeah, it's gonna be a and, lot of fun today. And he's uh, driving have, you crazy. We have Chris from the Grand. That's what the I movie heard. Theater yeah. On today. So yeah, it's, it's a, Hopefully, he shows up. We've had like a really bad track record trying to get guests in. It's really weird. We try to get them in, and they cancel, or they just don't show up. And oh so, my word, I'm so sorry you're having to. To uh, yeah, do, deal with that. So, so putting pressure on Chris, call the Grand and be like, make sure you go. We don't have Dennis O'Connor calling your guests to tell them to get their butts here. Yeah, that I'm talking so. about him. So they better hurry up and be yeah. here. So, uh, so you don't know if Caleb Caleb could still show up. Is that correct? Caleb. Caleb. Isn't Chris. Caleb? No, no, I'm talking about Caleb and the homegrown. All right, tomatoes. let's go. Homegrown uh, tomatoes. Uh, no telling. He he basically just reached out because he needed to promote their fundraiser tomorrow at the corner pub because yeah. they're raising funds because they're going on tour to Europe. And uh, I was like, you know, if you wanted to come up here, we got a show for you because I know Cindy said she didn't have a guest. Yeah, so. and so they're raising money to pay for them to go to Europe. To I mean, if I had a guest, it's probably like a mixture of they needed some extra cash to have on hand because when they do festivals <laughs> and stuff there, they kind of. From what I understand, you have to pay for pretty much like 75% of everything you're doing. Mm-hmm. So they might provide water and some food when like before the day you're performing. But, you know, 
outside of the festival, the two days, three days. Right. You're on your own. And so, so. I, I just, I never heard of that, except on I Love Lucy when they were uh, trying to raise money and they made it sound like it was for a charity, but they were actually trying to raise money so that they can go to Europe with their, with Ricky and the band. So I, I, I just, I didn't know people did that. Like, I want you to come listen to us and give us some money because we need extra money for well, Europe. Well, it's like the music industry is changing in a sense of like Jared, a great example, Jared Starrett and the High Guns, he did like a GoFundMe kind of thing mm-hmm. to pay for the record. Oh, it's pay for his record. Yeah, pay for like the record, yeah. t- like the the studio time and things really? like that. Really? Yeah. Oh my! And what's really cool though, and the one thing I like about those funding campaigns is they they add a little personal touch to it. So they have levels of of donations. If you donate, like one of my favorite ones, I think it was Super Troopers, because they the, the you ever heard of the movie called Super Troopers? Yeah, that's kind of a popular movie among college and young kids. Um, because it's this so rude, it's crude behavior. Yeah. But uh, they did. They I don't know what the full story was, but they couldn't get the sequel made money wise. Like the studios weren't putting the money up. Because the first one was so bad. So That's well, the I... first one like it's a cult movie. I know it is. But so it's what they did was they did a GoFundMe type deal, and they raised I don't know how much money they raised because it was a lot. But what was really cool is the most expensive one. You like be in the movie, so you pay like five grand, and they fly right. they fly you out. And then you be in the movie, and then you go to the premiere. Oh, that's and cool. And so if you're, I mean, if you're one of those people who really likes, they do it with all sorts of tech stuff too, uh, games, books. And so if you really like a certain art and you want to get involved, that's a great opportunity to but give money. But that's so strange because if, you, uh, if you're raising money to do, let's say, a CD, okay. at what level do you get royalties from that? Well, investment. see, that's the thing. Is, it's not an investment. See, no, it's, a gift. it's just you're, you're, It's a gift. Okay. And it's like a. It's like a. You're helping him get hit, achieve what they're trying to do. Man, I'd make everybody say you really sign should, a waiver. Well, you should visit like Kickstarter. <laughs> if you go to Kickstarter, there's a lot of stuff going on there that's just just not like the big movies and stuff. Mm-hmm. It's like art projects or science projects or you know um, whatever. I mean, there's a variety of stuff. It's really weird. I mean, so, that's well. I just I feel bad. For people wanting to get in the music business today, because it has changed so much, it is not at all like I remember. A book came out about how to be in the music business, and it was it was already antiquated. I mean, like when it hit the shelves, because everything had changed uh, for people. And Dave Matthews had a big push in this because Dave Matthews did not want to adhere to you know signing his life away, and him being able to make the money he wants to make without beholding to a record company who says, uh, we'll give you money as soon as all the expenses that we've paid for getting you to where you are oh, yeah. are paid they, back. You pay for everything. The and, artist does. And the and the artist has no control over what is expenses. I mean, they tell them what the expenses are. And, the, and it's like the artist brought nothing to the table. You know, that's what... Drove me crazy. The first uh, recording, one of the first recording contracts I looked at whenever Samantha was going to be signed, I, I went, this is ridiculous because you've given her absolutely no value, none. Well, one of the hardest things for the producers today is what they brought to the table was the promotions. Mm-hmm. They're the ones that set up the venue. They get you to the venue. They're the ones that put that physical CD in your hand. Right. That was their that was their right. end of the bargain. Right. But today you can just do everything yourself. Exactly. And maybe promote, maybe the connections aren't truly there. Mm-hmm. But I think there's there's more artists there that won't benefit from that kind of connection. Right. And then there are some artists, specific ones, do benefit. Like, I mean, if you look at the history of Taylor Swift, it's really fine to read and see when she released music, how her music changed. And you can really tell when those connections finally came into play, where she mm-hmm. went from... Pretty big to like a superstar. Mega, mega, so, mega. Uh, but well, the merchandising, I understand, you know, the the record companies would throw the artist a bone, you know, with uh, merchandising. Some, But they still received a lot of it. But they got more money through the merchandising. And that's why they would tour so much because they felt like that's the only, you know, like ready cash money they could probably get their hands mm-hmm. on to do stuff with. And it just, it was a big wake-up call when these uh, boy band groups got together and they were so excited that somebody wanted to hear them and and wow i've got we've got a deal we've got a record deal this is so exciting and those poor you know the record industry people just played on their ego so bad and when they got tied into that they realized i'm not making any money i'm i'm 
I'm uh, captured in this hotel room. I go well, a lot on of businesses stage. start out like that. Uh, it's like who wants to put up the money, right? Makes basically gets first dibs on the money, right? That it makes, and that makes sense if you have a business partner. And I mean, really, and I guess this is me growing up in a, in a household of business people. It's like right? you always before you sign anything, you have to know where the money's going, right? So, but you don't think that the the partner that comes in that, that came in with the idea and that with the that's I think, working it, and I, I all think that? if they sign a contract, if they they sign a contract, mm -hmm. it's their own fault. Oh, I I so agree that you know they walk in and a lot of times their ego and emotion are going before them and realize this is stupid. I'm not making any money and I'm doing all the work is what you know they feel like, and those. Uh, and those greedy guys, well, like Ben Perlman was, he got put in jail because of all the, the scams he was running and all the money that he stole from these poor boy bands. They finally figured it out, and it was, uh, and it was pathetic. But he kind of led the way. And, and what's funny, in, in the music business, if it depended on what was hot at the time, and it wouldn't matter how creative or how great you were, what voice you had, but they had to know that they could put you in this, you know, in this slot. And that's all they cared about was like, was it trending? Were you, mm -hmm. you know, could you be hot real fast? And how much money could we make? How quick we could make the money off of you? And it was so depersonalized and not what you thought about, what you dreamed about in the, as going in, they're going to make me a star. They think I'm great. And all they want to do is just get as much out of you as fast as they can, because they know you're going to burn out real quick. And that's going to be, that's going to be it for you. So it, it, it was the dream breakers, I think, and that there's a whole um, timeline that you saw. And now they're, you know, now it's uh, the comeuppance that they're getting now for all, all their, how greedy they were and all. Now the technology has allowed the artists to take everything back, and now they have control. Well, the artists could take everything back before that, too. There's certain artists out there, if you read their stories, they're, they talk about how they recognize exactly what you're saying the, these producers would do, and they mm -hmm. wouldn't allow it. Right. And the publishing thing became I mean, there's the big old deal. artists out there, like yeah. kind of like Bob Dylan. Bob Dylan, mm -hmm. that, was, it was, that was his music. He mm -hmm. made that money. So there are certain artists who just, just want the chance, and so they'll sign away. Yes. That, yes. Just for the chance. And there are right. certain artists who are really smart about it. Like, right. You know, here's the deal. I'll sign it if all you get is 10%. Well, that's why, I, that's why I've... I thought Dave Matthews just, you know, created a whole model of how you could do this and let people, college kids, come in and record everything that they well, wanted to. Well, his models reflected off Fish. If you don't ever heard the band called Fish, and Fish kind of directed their model off mm -hmm. of the Grateful Dead. The Grateful Dead is one of the first were, bands that started. Very rebellious about. Well, they started the whole trend of touring all the time. Right. They started the trend of recording their music. It became kind of a cult following. I wanted to record because, like, in college. Uh, my friend and I, we were part of websites that you could trade music with each other that were live recordings. But the thing is, there was like there was literally a uh, an ecosystem on this website where the va the value of each recording had a, an actual value to it. Were you Napstering before? Napstering? No, no, this isn't this isn't Napstering. This is more of just trading because, like, say I have this show from 1966 of Led Zeppelin, whatever. Well, it has like a ten. Well, I can trade somebody worth ten. So if he had four recordings worth two or whatever, I mean, like, mm -hmm. I could trade him. The recordings? The recordings. That would be it, five recordings worth two? Cause or whatever, you know, the math. The math. <laughs> well, I'm saying that, that's how you would, that's how the, uh -huh. the ecosystem worked. Because everyone just wasn't just right out sharing music. It's more of forcing people mm -hmm. to work it out and right. do that kind of stuff. Because there's some really good recordings out there that people probably never heard. Especially for the Grateful Dead. Grateful Dead has Imagine. so many... I mean, even albums you can go buy mm -hmm. that are recordings of live shows. And Dave Matthews is the same story. Right. Well, I, I just know when he came along, I really was paying attention to it because it, there was such a shift in the in, in the music business at that time. Mm -hmm. And he was just, I thought, what a rebel this guy was and how smart he is. Let everybody, whatever you want to do, come on in and record everything because well, of how Pearl Jam, had been restricted. So Pearl Jam, actually, what they did, they took that model. And they go, they realized people wanted those deals. So what they did, they won't allow people recording, but they put the recordings, a professional mix down mm -hmm. available within the week of the right. live show. And it's like 10 bucks. So you can buy the show you're at for 10 bucks or something like that. Yeah, well, when you go in there and get a free 
and record it free. But it's not the quality. Doesn't matter. It's, it's the it's the, you. It does matter. What trust you me. Hear. If you listen to a lot, if you listen to a lot oh. of music, and that's why there's values. I was telling you on this website because like some of these recordings were off the board, and their right. val- their values way I, up because yeah, it's, you know what it's I'm not, talking about. It's not a microphone pointing at Dave Matthews like yeah, this is gonna be great, man. Yeah, I'm, no. I'm here. This is me, and you can hear me talking. You hear, you Dave hear the Matthews you hear singing. the annoying fan in I the don't back. Care. It's, take it's, off your shirt. Take <laughs> off your shirt, But that makes Dave. it real. Okay, talking about real. Speaking of real, Reality Radio. You're listening to the Cindy Cochran Show with uh, Richard Schichler. And there's Jake, the intern, being very quiet. Jake, you got to join in the conversation. Okay, guys, please don't go away. And we want to thank our sponsor, Wooten Financial Group, for sure, for sponsoring the Cindy Cochran Show. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Please, please stay with us. Don't forget to download the Lone Star Community Radio app from your Google Play or Apple Store. Bring Montgomery County's Community Radio with you anywhere with your smartphone or tablet. If you are in the Conroe area, tune in on FM. That's Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1. If you are on the computer, bookmark IRLoneStar.com as your internet radio station. A Lone Star Community Radio. Broadcasting 24-7 from the heart of downtown Conroe, Texas. Every week I get asked the same two questions. Am I ready to retire? Will my savings last for our lifetime? Hi, this is Chris Wooten with Wooten Financial Group. Our firm has been in Montgomery County for decades, but the hopes and dreams of the people we serve never change. If these two questions are on your mind, we'd like to help. We have a simple introductory client experience that allows us to get to know you and includes a few meetings for you to kick the tires at no charge. We'll provide you with a one-page summary that helps you get a better handle on which questions are the right questions for you. To take the first step to a clear direction for your retirement, call Wooten Financial at 936-449-5952. That's 936-449-5952. Or visit us on the web at WootenFinancial.com. That's W-O-O-T-T-O-N Financial.com. Get started today. We're back on the Cindy Cochran Show. Hello. I know my name. Where's that paper? Um, I thank you so much for listening. Thank you for joining us. So we've been talking about uh, random stuff. It's going to be a random kind of day because we have Richard Schischler with us and he's joining us to make sure everything is copacetic. Yeah. Do you know what that word means? No. It's, probably. A, it's an old word. It's a 60s type word. Copacetic means it. It's cool. It's You're cool. probably one of those deadheads. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. I, have, I actually have a lot of the Grateful Dead music. You do? That's just yeah. so fun. I just never would think of you and De- Grateful Dead. I just don't see Well, guys. I really like live music. And they were one of the first people, because like, I'm telling you, you go online and you find these forums and these people talk about great shows and you take their recommendations. And when you're listening to a lot of music, I, used to listen to, I still listen to a lot of music, but it's just like for certain artists, I really enjoy and I really enjoy them live. Mm-hmm. I really love hearing them live because they tell stories and all that kind of stuff. So right. you search for it. There's a lot of good stuff out there that expands on whatever current artists you already like. I don't know about new artists, though. Like, I don't imagine Taylor Swift concerts are really cool. Um, I don't know, man. Those Swifties, they, they talk pretty No, highly. I meant more of, like, what's different from what's different from her show in California than her show in Texas. Like, I don't really see that being a huge mm-hmm. difference. But these shows are, like, what I'm talking about, Grateful Dead, Dave Matthews, James Taylor, Jackson Brown, Simon Garfunkel. They're different pretty much every show because they talk a little bit about something different or they uh, make comments about where they currently are. And it's just a little, a little cooler. And plus, some of the versions of the songs are different. So it's you like, feel like you bond with them more. I feel like I, I like their music more because I have like, like I have like favorite versions of a certain song, yeah. and it's like a certain date. And but did you like Dave Matthews right off? Did you like? No, was actually, so I was different? I was uh, my friends joke with me because I did not like him, and I I was wanted... vocal about it. And then I started. I bought my, the first live Sister. album. I bought there was an album. Uh, he did a thing at Central Park, this huge concert in Central mm-hmm. Park, and I bought that. And the energy on that was a lot different. I don't even like his albums, like the actual studio albums. The studio albums yeah. does not compare to his live stuff because he has. There's a lot more energy with the whole band, and they actually play all their instruments together in a sense of like you get to hear each one, and they take turns. Kind of, a, they're a jam band, uh, right. essentially. So same thing with the Grateful Dead. Like their stuff's a lot longer. 
on like live. Dave Matthews' concert at, uh, I mean, to back up your point, Dick, at um, Fenway Park. I think it was, yeah, I have that. Al- there's an album they released. Yeah, yeah. And that was that live performance was yeah. incredible, and and some of their songs that are normally four minutes long, they they turn them into fifteen minute oh, performances. Yeah. And yeah. It's, it's yeah. Well, incredible. one of my favorite songs from is Thirty Two Minutes. Thirty Two Minutes. Thirty Two Minutes song. Yeah. Yikes. Uh, Chad, my son Chad, loved. I mean, loved Dave Matthews. Everything in his room he had big signs of of Dave Matthews, and. We were sitting in the studio at Silver Rock Productions, and I said, uh, "Do you want to? Do you want to talk to his? Uh, do you want to talk to somebody from the Dave Matthews Group?" And he goes, "What? Is, yeah, let's, let's let's call him up." So we called the studio, and somebody answered. I said, uh, "Hi, was, uh, I was wondering if Dave Matthews was, was in." And he said, "Well, he's in the studio right now. Uh, can I take a message?" Th- th- just that conversation made Chad go like, "You thought you were talking to Elvis, you know?" Like, Called up Sun Records and said, "Yeah, Elvis will be right here." Um, I don't know what kind of conversation you'd have with him though. He's kind of Dave Matthews. He's kind of all over the place. <laughs> you think so? If you well, if you listen to a lot of his live stuff, is, is you get to get to know these people, and you're yeah. like, "This guy's a little off." Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> he's missing a screw. He's, I mean, he's a little off. <laughs> now that's also a dying art or practice, as well as is having the posters. Mm-hmm. Of- yeah, I actually have a poster from the Woodlands one first concert. From the Woodlands Pavilion, I think it was like 2004. Or People don't like that. do that anymore. My generation does not do that. They don't. They don't keep posters. They. they Actually, right. I have the live recording. Really? From when <laughs> when I went to my first concert, yeah. It's really bad though. But I have the video. Who was so it? I got it. We got. We found the video that was ripped from the cameras. Oh, I probably shouldn't say that. Because <laughs> you know how the cameras in the pavilion. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Some guy who was the board op there posted the videos. So I have that. Oh man. Who was it? That played. Dave, Dave Matthews. Oh, oh, it was. That was the first Dave Matthews concert I went to. Oh, was it at uh, Cynthia Woods? Yeah. Yeah, that's San- – Chad's been to every single one of those. I mean, the, the, right being on the person front. you know, I'm not encouraging Loves. people to – you know, if you search it, you'll find it. I don't know. I'm not going to tell you where. But you can find that. If you find the right person being the board op, they'll, you can get some really cool shows. hmm And especially shows you've gone to. Yeah. So. That's awesome. That's yeah. a great way to learn how to cheat. So – don't make fun of me the things I do. Well, just... if you're a musician listening, I think it's, I mean, if you're one of those people touring and you have the production quality, you need to put that stuff up and you can sell. Like Pearl Jam, I can't imagine how much money they make from that. Because imagine, okay, say they have a concert of 10,000 people and say 10,000 people know they could buy that concert they went to for $10. How many people do you think would buy? Probably 10% maybe. Oh, like, I would have said higher than that. Well, I, I mean, gone, realistically, I would I mean, have gone closer to twenty-five. Yeah, so I mean, that's that's a lot of people paying ten bucks just for something that you've already are being paid to do, and there you go. I mean, like you know, in uh, uh, glam rock and all that stuff, and Pearl Jam. Uh, the thing of Pearl Jam, I remember that name so well, is because I was at a high school doing a. I, they would call me in, and they would have uh, the auditorium. Full of the kids, they'd bring them in. I think it's just so the teachers didn't have to do stuff. And uh, and I, I was, uh, I had signing with Cindy was out, and I was doing a lot of stuff. I was on TV a lot, so they they uh, had me come in and do a concert of signed songs. They, okay. And talk about sign language and talk about my work with the deaf, the hearing impaired, and all that. So I've been doing that forever, and but I saw the change of the music. Of course, I I do contemporary songs that were coming. Well, I didn't do like hard rock or you know in that stuff. It was, and I was doing some song like, "You Light Up My Life," something like you know like a Debbie Boone type of song. And I, these kids, somebody yelled out, "Do Pearl Jam!" I had no idea what Pearl Jam was. I went, "Oh, yeah, well, they're not, they're not too bad. They don't have a lot of them." But they, but they started calling out a lot of the you know the headbanger stuff, type yeah. stuff, and I'm going like, "I don't know that one." Uh, but I'll, uh, it was just, and they were real rowdy. Freebird. Yeah. But the kids got rowdier and rowdier. It just seemed like, uh-oh, this is, you know, they don't, the, the teachers don't have control of these, these kids. And um, I, went, I went to one, it was a temple. They called me in to come talk to their kids. And these kids were very wealthy, children of wealthy parents. And, all. and this uh, one kid, I'm up there talking about how sign language um is the fourth most used language in the world. I'm going through all this. And so this kid goes, hey, so 
do you know what this sign means? And he shot me the bird. And I went, good job. You would be really good at, at signing because you did that so quickly. And the teachers were like all scrambling, trying to get to his hand and make him stop doing it. And I was like, that's, that's really great. And But the kids were so the stuff they would say and the teachers had to go like oh that's just how johnny is and that's how they are and i was uh, i saw this like a big johnny change is. happen and people the kids you know like i was doing this in the 70s the 80s and the kids would send thank you notes to me for coming and doing this and by the 80s kids couldn't spell anymore i mean they i would go like look let's try and read this and it just showed how the spelling was so, got so bad and uh, now they, they don't even teach spelling after a certain point they don't have spelling they don't have spelling tests they don't have spelling words they don't do spelling anymore so when I, when they hand in stories and stuff I'll go like how can your teacher read this this isn't you're spelling there like their car t-h-e-r-e and they goes well it sounds the same so they they say it's, you know just write it don't worry about if it's spelled correctly just make just write it down that just that should scare everybody to think this is who we're sitting at. They cannot read cursive because they don't teach cursive at all. So when they see a sign, Cindy said, what does that sign say? And I went, what? It just says, do not enter her. But it was written in cursive, and they couldn't read the cursive. I don't know how to – I can read cursive, but if it's if it's old handwriting, like if my grandmother writes in cursive, right? I can't read it. Because <gasps> it's, it's even different than what I learned, and I – I can't use. I can't write. Well, cursive. you know, some people just have really bad handwriting. So <laughs> well, I, don't think, I think she's regardless got, of she's got great or not, just, No, but it's so probably it's, like calligraphy looking. Yeah, yeah. It, but I can't write certain letters. I don't remember how to write Z in in cursive. In cursive, I can write like I love you because those are Isn't all basic. Z letters. like a, it's like an N, but with a little G at the bottom, like a little tail, right? Yeah, there's a tail. Yeah. And, it, and it starts with a curve, and it goes, you know. Yeah. But you know, it used to be on on top of the around the classroom. So all the what, letters. When you guys sign That's checks so or when you sign your name in cursive, yeah. do y'all like actually do the letters? Because I just do. Yeah. Da, 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 da. I just <gasps> a bunch of loops and circles following my J that I do. You know. You have to sign checks in cursive. <laughs> what? I do you? you don't I've print, always. I've you always. You don't print done. your name, do you, Richard? No. You don't. I mean, I sign my name, but I have. Huh? I guess it's a hybrid of cursive and jumbled. Right. <laughs> yeah. Scratch. Oh, <laughs> That's my word. Too. This is now we're gonna have to ask Joey because Joey's younger than you are, right? Yeah. Here, now I gotta <laughs> sign my name. I gotta figure out. I, I, I was just. I didn't even think about. It. I know it's it's in cursive. <laughs> I don't do the S in cursive though. That's for one. That's I do know that. Now, for Schistler, because that's the S. The, a capital S is a little over the top. Oh man, that's that looks like you you got a lot of money. That's a nice. I write a, nice, a lot of. I can't. Oh, the, I can't. I don't know. I gotta. Give me the bit. Now he does it. He's got to write it. He's got to. No, I'm mean, actually. I'm just. I'm curious what S, the capital S in cursive looks like because I remember it being. It looks almost like the uh, note. You know, like when it's, a, it's. You don't. You forget what the S looks like. Well, because I don't use the S in cursive. Come Give on. me a pen. Please. Please. Jeez. Give me a pen. Manners, Cindy. Manners. Jeez. Oh, please. I'm talking to him. Well, what's, what's weird to me about cursive is I thought the whole idea of cursive was it's supposed to be a continuation of the pen to paper, right? Right. But usually, That's the capital letters have a break. The, my J doesn't. My, no, they don't. My P doesn't. Usually, but it's, and my L doesn't. Because, like, if you look at the old style way they type, like the typography was cursive. They always cap like made it really big, mm -hmm. the first letter, and it never continued. It's just. <laughs> well, I don't. That's weird. Well, do the S for me. Do the S in cursive, capital I, S. I did. Then, I just, I just but continue it. writing. Oh, okay. Okay. Be like that. Yeah. Where's the C? What? It's S C H. I don't know how to spell your name. <laughs> I can already pronounce your name, but that's so. the way S is. But this is the way I would write my name in that. I practiced that because I wanted to autograph. So, so what do you? Why you know what we need to do is we need to find whoever was the one that said no more cursive in the classroom. How did that? Yeah, when because did that? It's a dying that art, and you don't need it. It's pointless. Is it kind of like Latin? Yeah, it's like Latin. Oh, that's scary, guys! You you've seen kind of the transition where there's he can't read cursive. But that doesn't make him less of a person. I mean, where? Of course not. But it's just that it shows that. Can you read Spanish? 
Yeah, I, I can actually. So there you go. He just replaced it with Spanish. <laughs> and Spanish That's is really the only other that. language I can read. So yeah. You can read Spanish. I That's can't cool. write it. it to yeah. formulate a sentence is impossible, but to read it, I can. That's not bad. That's why sign language is the way we should all learn sign because it's universal. Be everything. That's it right. really is. I think it's the only universal language. Is there? The only universal language. There is, right? I don't think it changes. What? The, sign, the language. sign language. I don't think it changes between languages. No, I don't think there's... Oh. Yeah. Yes, it does. Oh, it yeah, does? There's Spanish sign, sign language and uh, there's... Is that just because, like, the possessive words and things like that? No, no. Now, it came out of, uh, came out of like, latin base, but but I think that when uh, when they first started teaching it, I could, I could go to any country probably and get along with someone who's, who's yeah, hearing impaired. Yeah. And use the sign language, but and because the basis, like the male, female, the basis of the language. Because you know there was an episode of Star Trek that talked about sign language. Did yeah. it really? Yeah. Oh, I think I hear my music. I think we're going to break. I love it. Thank you, Jake, for being so subtle with it and not going. Shut up, Cindy. And here we'll be right back. Don't go away. A Lone Star Community Radio is Montgomery County's radio station with talk, music, weather, and traffic for Montgomery County. Have a question or comment about one of our shows? Want to know how to reach a host? Just contact the station at IRLoneStar.com or call in and leave a message at 936-647-3776. Get involved with your community with Lone Star Community Radio. Every week I get asked the same two questions. Am I ready to retire? Will my savings last for our lifetime? Hi, this is Chris Wooten with Wooten Financial Group. Our firm has been in Montgomery County for decades, but the hopes and dreams of the people we serve never change. If these two questions are on your mind, we'd like to help. We have a simple introductory client experience that allows us to get to know you and includes a few meetings for you to kick the tires at no charge. We'll provide you with a one-page summary that helps you get a better handle on which questions are the right questions for you. To take the first step to a clear direction for your retirement, call Wooten Financial at 936-449-5952. That's 936-449-5952. Or visit us on the web at wootenfinancial.com. That's W-O-O-T-T-O-N financial.com. Get started today. Back on the Cindy Cochran show, when we've been talking about how uh, cursive writing is like this lost art, it's going away. They're not teaching it anymore in schools, and eventually, you won't need this anymore. You're not going to need this. For the listening audience, she's holding up a pen. <laughs> a pen. Yes. Well, I mean, we, we've been fear mongering so. about the penny and the nickel, and yeah. I, I think both of those should go as well because I don't they, think the pen's ever going to go away. The pen? You don't think the pen's yeah, ever going to go? Yeah, it's going to be used for corrections. How can you quickly correct things? You autocorrect. I think you'll be autocorrected. Yeah, but like if someone printed something, how would I be able to correct it? Well, nothing will ever be printed again. Nothing will be printed. It's paperless. We'll go paperless. So imagine a world. Well, you should have seen the look in his face. I wish you could. His imagine eyes just changed. the world. Well, imagine everything you're reading is a screen. Right. So right in front of you, besides right. my laptop, right. This right here, this Kleenex box, would be a screen. Is that what you're trying to tell me? Well, the, it's going to be in here. It'll be like Google glasses. It'll be like here, right here. So everything's going to be uh, white. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where are my glasses? Everything's white. <laughs> everything's really dirty. You know, we should be. We should start investing in those. Um, the things that clean the screen. The, well, I mean, speaking yeah. of future advances in technology, I read an interesting article about that said by thir- by 2030, there will be no uh, cars on the road minus self-driving cars. In the year 25, 25. Yeah. Which is crazy to think. I mean, if that's we're alive. 17 Can't or 13 that years. Or, yeah, I mean, it's 13 years away. No, the song 25, 25. Listen to that song. Where we're not going to need any legs to walk, you know, we're, it'll, we'll be carried. The everywhere. age of Aquarius? No, 2525 is. Um, Cleopatra 2525 TV show? In the year 2525. Shut up, <laughs> Richard. Where's that? I told you I needed that clip right now. Well, um, actually, I mean, Google has this really cool stuff going on because, like, their first round of Google Glass went out. And I know they developed the software to the point where if you hold up your phone, I forgot what they call it, but like, you could hold up the phone. 
and put it over, like, say, Spanish. Uh -huh. And you put it over a Spanish word, it'll translate it. It would, just, it would be written in English for you or whatever uh -huh. language you desire. Uh, and then they also have, like, a VR maps. So, if, for example, if you're in the square over here right, and you hold up your phone, it'll go around. It'll tell you what the businesses are. But it would be like in 3D in a sense. <laughs> so they have oh, that, cool. like, oh, that's a restaurant, or that's the. They got so, that with stars too. You can point your phone up at the stars at night, yeah, and it'll tell you, tell you what yes, constellations I, there are and stuff like when that. that. When that first came out, I remember going, and that was just freak me out. Like, how can this be happening in this phone? So we're talking about the future on the Cindy Cochran Show, and the future of the Cindy Cochran Show. And uh, I, I probably won't be here when a lot of this stuff becomes like second nature. And you won't even, you used to, you mean you used to have to write stuff down and, and say that kind of, you know, the kids are already saying things like, like that. You used to have to do what? How did you make a phone call? How did you, you know, the phone never left the, the house? <laughs> like stuff that they say is so weird. Yeah, okay. Uh, but that's great. I love how I love you technology. With, how love are you future. modern? How how are you with modern technology now? I mean, are you up to date? Or, or, I okay, mean, shut, shut shut shut! Don't put the thing on Richard at all. Don't don't put the camera on Richard because he's just going to roll his eyeballs and they're going to be set like that. You know, they could be caught like that, rolling your eyeballs at me. But um, anyway, I'm I'm fine. I understand that the phone. I didn't know have to, I didn't have to know how a phone was put together or anything like that. I just picked it up and dialed and talked and that kind of thing. But technology today, the troubleshooting, you know, that you have to kind of know, and the kids know automatically how to get to this stuff. It's amazing. I, lo I mean, I love the technology, but sometimes you start feeling like Sam feels like it's gone and left him behind. He's totally left behind. Well, and my, so my mom is an IT person, and she's done, she's done that her entire right. life. She's she knows how to write code and all this stuff, and she struggles with helping out her mom because it's it's frustrating to her that she can't understand it. And I said, I said, mom, you know, wait, you'll be there someday. And she swears that I'm such an IT lover that I will never be there. And my father mm -hmm. is already there. My my dad doesn't <laughs> know how to. Not. Operate a, I mean, if 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 we didn't force him to get a smartphone, he would still have a flip phone. a dumb phone. I, he would I, still have one. I know, I understand, and it's and and so much has happened. There's so much has changed. I mean, like when things would change in back when I was young, it was like one thing at a time, and you'd be there for like five years with that one thing, getting used to it, and then something else would come along. But now it's like bam, 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 everything comes at you because there's so so much going on that. You know, you start going like, I don't care anymore. So a, a funny story of mine from uh, with the use of old technology. When I was in sixth grade, I got my first phone. And it was one of the flip phones. I think it was a Razor or whatever it was. And um, I had a terrible habit of either losing it or breaking it. And like so, everyone else. Hmm. Like everyone else. <laughs> and so eventually my dad said, look, I'm not getting you another one. Right. If you want a phone, this is what you have to use. And he handed me a 1998 those big the, the Cotio, whatever it, it was six <laughs> inches tall an inch and a half to two inches wide it had a it had an inch by inch screen and a, i mean think it had an antenna it had an i had to go to school with a phone that an had antenna. an antenna wow and kids would laugh at me and, would... and i would say you know i dropped it off the top of a three-story parking garage and that thing didn't break that thing happened to it i know it's just it's um it's absolutely amazing now my my son-in-law and my daughter gave Samuel Cindy these phones. These, I don't know what's called, uh, I don't know, but nothing happens. These phones, nothing happens to them. They go underwater. They, you can, nothing, it won't, it will never break or anything. Is it the phone or the case? No, no it's the, the phone. The, the phone. You know, I was, I was thinking about Cindy. Look at this phone. This is amazing. And I realized what we need to do for you. Uh-oh. So we'll do one of those proximity chips mm -hmm. in you. Yeah, like we'll implant, we we'll implant the chip mm -hmm. in you. Okay. Okay. I, I'm ready and for so that. So when you leave the phone, yes, like ten meters from you, it'll yeah. start violently shaking your right arm, <laughs> trying and to come it, back towards. And it's like you can't forget this, Cindy. We'll, we'll lose you if you forget the phone. <laughs> right. And I think we need to do that. And you can set up with other stuff, like you know, you left the light on, it'll mm -hmm. just violently shake you, and it's right. like you left the light on. You can't leave your house without turn off everything. Oh, that reminds me. We're gonna me. force living a better life on everyone. Okay, my, my dad was not at all abusive or anything like that, but 
Hey, there's a light. Wow. <laughs> this guy. Oh, there's going? a light. Dark and deep. <laughs> In my bedroom, there was a light, light bulb. And the way you, I turn it, you have to turn it off is like the Turn it off like that. And that was in my in my bedroom. We literally you twist it off. Twist, like, twist it and turn it take off. Take it out. Yeah. No, just twist it and it'll turn off. Well, know? just the connection will be severed, but yeah, it's still right. okay. So, uh, and and he would say, uh, turn off the light before you go out like of the this room. Is a fire hazard. And it is. And he would get so mad. This is the only he got so mad, he took me by the hair and walked me back to the room and up there and said, Turn off that light. It has been on all day. I went, okay, and I grabbed it and went, I just started screaming because it was so hot <laughs> to turn it off. And I was like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And he says, well, that now you'll remember, right? And he goes, I said, I'll remember. And I never did. I never forgot that. So when you said turn off the lights, that just like sends a chill on me. I will always turn the lights off. Except we don't ask Sam if I still do that. Because well, that, well, <laughs> that was one thing I really liked. That was my rebellion. of Google Glass is Google Glass would uh, – if you set up reminders, mm-hmm. it would tell you because it's all about GPS. So it would tell you, don't forget to, like you're leaving your house, don't forget to pick up your grocery list or something like that. And see? it would learn it would learn your patterns and it would tell you <gasps> stuff like that. Well, see, and now you can That's... upload your your uh, grocery list to your phone and so you never have to well, go no, wait, it. I, gro- I, that was a bad example. It's more of like don't forget – the lunchbox or, like, don't yeah. forget this or something like that. Because that. even with the lights now, it, it, if uh, you forget to turn your lights off, you can use your phone to turn them off in your entire house. But You know what I hate, though, though, is the the automated light that goes off in the bathrooms at places, at church. Why? Well, yeah. because you're on the... And, well, it's similar to and the it sink. Goes, it's similar to the sink. It's like and, you push a button <laughs> and it only goes for, like, four seconds. How long are you yeah. in the bathroom for? No, but you go in, go you go in there and the light turns off. Bob Smiley said this one time. He said he was at church and he went in there and he got he sat down on the toilet and he was there oh, is that for, what a, he was doing? for a while. What else and is then he doing? He Let's took, get more details from the story. And the lights go off. He's totally <laughs> – so he took the toilet paper roll and threw it in the – because I mean, do you light, really need to see? The light You've been comes doing on. it, Bob, for like plus thirty years, so <laughs> you think you'd be able to? <laughs> but that's the way you turn the lights back on. Is the to- anyway, uh, okay. Uh, it's Thursday, and there's a new movie that's going to start tomorrow, and we certainly have to give this its kudos and and talk about this show that's going to start. So stay with us, and we'll be uh, and reviewing a show we haven't seen yet, but we all saw it for years and years and years on TV. And now it's the big screen. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. You're listening to Cindy Cochran's show. We want to thank the Wooten Financial Group for being our sponsor. I hope they're not embarrassed today that they are a sponsor. But anyway, uh, we will be right back, so don't go away. You're listening to Cindy Cochran's show, Real Reality Radio. Hi, this is Cindy. Thank you for taking the time to snuggle up with a good computer and a latte grande and listen to The Cindy Cochran Show, having fun with the world's news and local happenings in your own backyard. Every week I get asked the same two questions. Am I ready to retire? Will my savings last for our lifetime? Hi, this is Chris Wooten with Wooten Financial Group. Our firm has been in Montgomery County for decades, but the hopes and dreams of the people we serve never change. If these two questions are on your mind, we'd like to help. We have a simple introductory client experience that allows us to get to know you and includes a few meetings for you to kick the tires at no charge. We'll provide you with a one-page summary that helps you get a better handle on which questions are the right questions for you. To take the first step to a clear direction for your retirement, call Wooten Financial at 936-449-5952. That's 936-449-5952. Or visit us on the web at WootenFinancial.com. That's W-O-O-T-T-O-N Financial.com. Get started today. A Lone Star Community Radio is looking for those who are interested in hosting their own talk show with monthly and weekly slots available on Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1, and on IRLoneStar.com. Start your own podcast, create your first YouTube channel, and be on TV. Contact Lone Star Community Radio online at IRLoneStar.com or call the station message line at 936 647 Three seven seven six to take your first step into the radio world. And we're back. You know, if you're going to watch the show on YouTube, I think he was still recording when we went off, right? You were? 
Yes. I was trying to take my headset off and just pop myself right back in the face. Uh, it was pretty funny. So I hope you capture that because we like to be totally transparent, or I like to be totally, totally transparent about how. How much of a doofus you are? Yeah, I wasn't going to say it that way, Richard. Where's my? Wait, it's coming. It's coming. Oh, he 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 messed it up. Wait, wait. Shut up, Richard. There you go. Oh, great. Do it again. Let me just hear that. Well, maybe not because it might have curse words now. No. Shut up. Shut up, Richard. Damn it, Richard. There you go. <laughs> See, I can't curse, so I'll just do it like that. <laughs> I did that one time. I got to tell you, Jake, you're going to love this story. Oh, the cursing story? Yeah, don't, I'm going to tell Jake the cursing you? story. I was uh, 30. I was, I was 40. <laughs> I doubt, I doubt you I was were 40. in your 40s and you never cursed. I, I, I don't curse. I, don't, I really don't Yeah, curse. but there's got to be a time when you're like 12 and you're by yourself and you're like, what does it feel like you to know say what? these words? You know what? I was eight years old and I went. Nobody was around sitting in the car. We're not allowed to say these words on the air, by the way. And I said the D word, and I said the H word. And I was like, I kept looking around to see if I was there. Anyway. Like so H-E double hockey stick fast, word? Yeah. Fast forward to, so I'm 40 years old. Okay. Okay. So I'm, I don't, I don't curse. But there was a guy that just about pushed me to wanting to say, call him what I thought. Because he cursed all the time. And he said all the big words. I mean, the, the really bad words. And he would come into my office mad about something and tell me what he thought about whatever. And he said, you know, like, I need this production done by this time. And you said you're going to have it done. And I said, I told you. But he just would just let me have it. And so one time I just, I, that was it. I had a guy that worked for me that certainly knew how to use the words. So I said, would you do a favor for me and come with me? I've got to have a meeting with this guy. And he says, okay. And I said, every time I point to you, I want you to say what you think I, that you would have said. Because he hated this guy, too. So we went in the office, and I said, hey, so and so, you know what? If you ever, and I point to the guy, and he goes, da, 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 come in my office again and say those words. I'm going to beat the da, 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 out of you. Do you understand me? Don't you he ever. said this? I never said I never said the bad words. I pointed to the guy, and he would say the words he would have said to him. So it was like a sitcom. It was great. It was so wonderful. And this guy's well. Was, don't you think it's more was, of, more about the intent of your heart than what was actually verbally said, Cindy? Because you were using the other man, yeah, to feel better about yourself, but right. you still intended to say those words to this man. Right. I think I still was so wrong to all me, the way that's around. That's the same. I, I think there, I I don't think that's. I, I felt like I think that's exactly the same. I, <laughs> it was the only way I could do it. The only way I felt like I could get away with doing. Well, that's that. why I like the English folks. So, is the English folks have creative ways to say the same word. No, you know they can say, but then they can get real raunchy with it too. No, <laughs> yeah. but the English can say just about any curse word, and it does not come out the same way as you get somebody oh, from yeah. New York saying it. I, I'm telling you, it just does not have the same effect. In fact, it's just you know you feel complimented that they said something. You know, like. Really? I mean, you feel like they liked you after they say some horrible curse words to you. But, yeah. but anyway, okay, so the, the movie that's coming out is Baywatch. It starts, yes, tomorrow. It to, starts tomorrow. Tonight. Oh, tonight. tonight. tonight the, it, yeah, you can go see it tonight if you want to stand in line and oh, see yeah. Baywatch. Richard, have you ever seen an episode of the original Baywatch? Oh, yeah. I have never seen the, an episode of the original Well, my Baywatch. favorite thing about Baywatch is it was one of those shows You can. Uh, it was syndicated. It, on it was syndicated, like you know, for a while. Saturday morning, afternoon, Sunday morning, afternoon. Programming was classic. It was all the cheesy TV mm -hmm. shows that got syndicated, and Baywatch was one of them. So I mm -hmm. watched a lot of Baywatch, and it was really like it's funny that the plots they would try to. It's <laughs> I'm not kidding you. Like the the writing went uphill all the way through the series. It was like it went. <laughs> It, to the point, there were like secret agents. It was kind of like Fast and the Furious. Wait, the first couple Pam episodes, Anderson, getting Pam Anderson. First couple of movies were about cars, and all of a sudden they decided, "Hey, let's make them superheroes." So, <laughs> Wait, the Baywatch people were were super. <laughs> well, like no, because well, the plots would just grow. It wasn't like the, the original plots were the day to day lives. life. Yeah, the the original show, the first like three seasons were like just the normal. What was it like to be a a, a person on the beach saving lives? Mixed in with some personal, you know, drama kind of thing, but then with they girls went. Girls wearing well, no, skin. and then well, then there's guys too, and then because uh, oh, yeah. they definitely had speedos on, and 
<laughs> what was funny is like I guess whoever was in the riot room was like, we gotta we gotta like really do an arc. Because a lot of the shows at the time were doing arcs for the whole yeah. season. And mm -hmm. so some of the stuff was just ridiculous. When, and they, when they had jumping the shark type of uh, you know episodes, they really had jumping the shark episodes. Do you know what that means? No, not entirely. Well, that was well, that's a, a, a term used. From Happy Days. From Happy Days. Because they Never were trying to up the either. ratings. If you're trying to, you know, you're going through a sweeps week where they're, they're getting all the ratings. So you want to do something that's outrageous to bring people in and all that. And so they have Fonzie jumping. Literally jumping a shark, shark. while skiing. Yeah. And, and so that became like the, the name. Well, basically the when the, the show jumps, it's not a good term. Yes. Because it's, it's basically saying your show is lost. You're selling the You're off the rails. Yeah. With what's you're going desperate, on. You're desperate. Totally desperate. And yeah, but uh, Baywatch definitely had that. But also, there, it was funny is those kind of shows had the soap opera, like, I guess theme, or not theme, but mm -hmm. like the writing style. So Mentality. It was just really dramatic. The lighting was over the top. Because, I mean, you have people... Imagine being outside in California mm -hmm. and going in salt water once or twice a day and then still being filmed. Like, you would look like dirt. You just wouldn't <laughs> look very pretty or, you know, you just wouldn't feel very good, Those I imagine. false eyelashes would never so, look yeah, all of, Yeah, that's one thing I loved. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it was... Oh, yeah. but Pam Anderson really, you know, that's well, she's where only she in made it for her like mark. Three seasons. Yeah, but she got wildly popular during that time. That's, that's made her, was uh, Baywatch, but... Was I, it was it her acting ability or well, from, Hasselhoff the, from the was neck in it. down? From the neck down, what Hasselhoff was in it? Like he to me was the main dude. Yeah, he yeah. was the main guy, and I didn't realize. I was telling Richard and, and Cindy, I didn't realize that he still had the rights basically to it, and he was the one who he wanted to be in this next one, and they told him no, and he, you know, reluctantly gave I, it I, up. I, it was funny about that. He, is there's got to be a statistic that could prove that certain actors increase the likelihood of people going to see the movie. Mm -hmm. Now, if they put Hasselhoff in the trailer, right? I think a bunch of people would not be negative to that. Like, oh, I want to check that out. Hasselhoff is in there. <laughs> well, I think he should have a role of some sort. But, I mean, this age doesn't even know who he is. Mean, I know who Hasselhoff is. But, no, but so I'm saying not, Hasselhoff not, has oh, You know why? The only way you, you watched SpongeBob, didn't you? And and you watched SpongeBob <laughs> the movie, and that's how you know How do you know, know who Hasselhoff is? I just know Hasselhoff because of Hasselhoff. I've, I knew about Baywatch. I knew he was in Baywatch. I knew yeah. all that stuff. I just have never personally seen an episode of Baywatch. Me, I know me, Hasselhoff me, more of the, it out. of the... Sex symbol that Hasselhoff. Knight Rider was a great show. Yeah, Knight Rider. He yeah. also he released a uh, movie came out like three years ago, two years ago called Kung Fury, and, and he did he, totally... he did a music video. Look it up. I forgot the music oh, video. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It was right. great. It's classic. But then song. he totally ruined his. But he got really totally drunk, real bad, drunk, and he's trying to eat that's a what, cheeseburger. That's what technology on the does. Floor, and you, that's, I think that's probably still on YouTube. As well. well, and he had the he had the sex scandal too. Yeah. And, with, and then his... Oh, know. he's on Baywatch. Every episode was sexy. <laughs> every, every, every... But anyway, the movie's out, so you can see Baywatch, the movie with Dwayne Johnson, who's really brought Dwayne it... Dwayne Johnson. It, Dwayne, I'm Dwayne. sorry. That, who does... What's his middle name? He's got a funky middle name. The Rock. Name. Yeah. The no, Rock. Okay. That's, what, that's what I just it's, said. It's like Rooney or something. It's the Rock weird. is on. Is I bet on. that movie's so, going to be awful, by the I way. I know. No, he's brought it up, too, because, you know, you also have the other teen idol in there. But uh, he brought it up to a new level of... Uh, yeah, no, he didn't. He probably didn't. <laughs> Nothing could have done it. Nothing could have done it. Okay. Anyway, guys, uh, we won't be here live tomorrow, but we will be here. It'll be a recorded show because uh, Richard has to go to a wedding, so we can't. Uh, we can't say that. We can't. No, we can't say that. I didn't say that. I didn't say anything. I said anyway. We're going to be here uh, recorded. And Richard is shaking his head so hard right now. Shut up, Cindy. Shut up, Cindy. That's what we need is that one. Okay, guys, thank you so much for listening. All right, cutter. And, uh, cutter. <laughs> Just cutter. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. This program is Hi, this is Cindy Cochran, and I want to thank you for checking out The Cindy Cochran Show and invite you to listen live every weekday morning from 10 to 11 on FM 106.1 and on 104.5 and globally on IRLoneStar.com. The show you just fell in love with was recorded and will be posted on our podcast channels on iTunes and Google Play. You can even watch the show on our YouTube and on TV with our City TV Channel 12 on Suddenly. So make sure to subscribe to keep up with me. My Facebook page, The Cindy Cochran Show, is always a good place to contact me through messages, to interact live on the air and ask questions, make suggestions, whatever. 
Special shout out to the show title sponsor, the Wooten Financial Group. Thanks for checking out this podcast of Lone Star Community Radio, Montgomery County's community radio station. If you enjoyed this recording, make sure to check out our past shows online at IRLoneStar.com or their respective video or podcast formats on YouTube, Google Play, or iTunes. If you have any questions regarding the show, either it being about sponsorships or questions for the host, contact the station manager at D-I-C-K at IRLoneStar.com or call the station at 936-647-3776. This show was recorded in downtown Conroe, Texas, at the Lone Star Community Radio Studio. And Lone Star Community Radio reserves all rights to this recording and images. This program is sponsored by the Wooten Financial Group. It is not the intent of Wooten Financial Group to render or offer personalized investment advice or financial planning advice through this radio program or any related website. Wooten Financial Group's participation in this program is limited to providing general information on financial matters and should not be construed as financial recommendation or investment advice. Investment advisory services are offered through Game Plan Advisors, Inc., a registered investment advisor registered with the Securities and Exchange Commission and the State of Texas. Insurance services are offered through Wooten Financial Group, Inc., Game Plan Advisors and Wooten Financial Group, Inc. are affiliated through common ownership and neither firm is affiliated with The Cindy Cochran Show. No listener should assume that any information presented and or made available on this program serves as the receipt of or a substitute for personalized individual advice from Game Plan Advisors, Wooten Financial Group, or any of their representatives.